So welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Grade a core set, Cyberstorm Access. In this video, I'm going to grade this new core set for Yu-Gi-Oh! Realism. We have a sneak peek that happens today, uh, during this weekend. And yeah, so let's get on with the rest of the video. Okay, as you can see in front of you, you can see the archetype potential for Manadium is 90%. Changing out uh, TC to the TCG name Manadium instead of Manado. And we have... Architect potential, Nemleria, 10%. Why is Manadium at 90%? I've got a lot of worries for the rest of the meta. Simply because I feel like it has a very easy entry point to enter into the meta. Whether it's going to be good in set in the meta going forward, I don't know. But it has a high chance of entering the meta scene. So it's yet to be seen whether it will be the archetype, new archetype that will dominate. But who knows? Okay. And so let's talk about what you see in front of you. We have a TCG exclusive update, Gold Pride. The value cards in the set are Chaos Angel, Fusion Duplication, and Trap Tracks. We have support update is Branded, Purely, Bestial, Code Talker, and Firewall. We have our wild card, which is Time Tearing Morganite. We have Legacy Support, which is Constella and Telemore. Now, and so I just want to say, um, a wild challenger enters the meta, which is super heavy samurai. Are you serious? Whether we have no percentage, I don't have no percentage of what it's going to be, whether it's going to be 0, 90, or 40%. Fuck this shit, I'm getting out of here. But whatever percentage it will be, I feel it will enter the meta. And let's go into the next slide. We have Yu-Gi-Oh! Award confirmed winners. So here we have the best archetype 2023 award, Kashtira. Facts. Why does Kashtira take this award? From the beginning of this year, Kashtira has premiered, and in every single tournament in TCG, it has either won or come in second place. You can't handle this power. In every single tournament this year so far, delivered consistent results. Good results, might I add. So yeah. Why it's why it's confirmed and I don't think it's going to shake that award anytime soon. We will be definitely be looking at that at the award, um, you know, the Yugi Awards later on this year that I host on my channel. We have the best wild card so far, Triple Tactics Thrust. Triple Tactics Thrust since release has proven its place as the best wild card for 2023. I think it can take it home. I think it can take home the bacon. No mistake, it has always been in top uh, uh, player decks, it has been in the best decks time and time again, topping consistently, so yeah, we're definitely going to be seeing that um, as we play the game more and more, and I expect to see it in future uh, lists, people taking that as well. And then we have the best core set, Photon Hypernova. I don't think this is going to be changed. Photon Hypernova has a grade of A. I don't think that's going to be changed. Um, the grade for this set is not as high as Photon Hypernova. I think Photon Hypernova is going to be the is going to remain the best core set of the year and just simply being the best set of the year, period. Um, even with the improvements of Amazing Defenders, it's still not enough to raise that bar to be the best set of the year. Okay, and so as you can see in front of you, you have Yuki Award candidate favorites. We have best legacy support. 2023, I feel it's it's Constellite and uh, Telemite. Um, we had um, Gishki before in Photon Hypernova, but Gishki lost its place as it we did not see results from it in any official tournament of capacity. Even in the top 64 of all the latest tournaments, we did not see Gishki perform at all. So it's we are going to see whether this will perform or whether it will have any sort of topping in near tournaments into the future with this level of support and if it doesn't well it will be it will be a favorite candidate or be taken off the list and um, we have best wild card archetype which is 2023 gold pride indeed gold pride this is a gamble here and i'm saying it's a favorite maybe we could see it top a variant of it top maybe we don't know but we will see whether it can take home that prestigious award of best wild card archetype of 2023 so far right now it's just a candidate is it going to be a favorite is it going to take home the bacon we don't know however 
we need results. You only get an award if you prove results on the latest tournament. So that is yet to be seen. Let's go to the next part of the video where we'll do the final grading for this set. Okay, but as you can see in front of you, the final grade for this set is B. It's for bravery. Why does it, why does um, Cyberstorm Access get a grade of B and don't, doesn't get an S tier? Well, this is not the best set. This is a set that complements other sets, similar to Darkwing Blast that we got last year. It's not, it's, it's all right, it's okay, but it only buffs Branded. It doesn't do anything to buff Kashtera. Um, it introduces purely into the it gives purely more support. It's basically a set that's giving support to previous archetypes or side archetypes that we have seen in previous sets that have come out this year. It buffs a lot of amazing defenders um, archetypes. We see the first new wave of support for super heavies in um, this. We see a lot of things that buff out old old archetypes and legacy archetypes as well as last year's archetypes is just a really buffing set just to buff um archetypes that we've seen previously and because it really doesn't add anything new to the table and some of the cards that it adds brings to the table are a bit questionable and a bit iffy for example time tearing morganite could in theory be a really good card for board breaking style decks but again not being able to play hand traps is a bit much now, that isn't to say it is a bad card, but it, but it definitely feels like a slow card. And for time tearing Morganite to be useful, the game needs to be slower. Unfortunately, Yu-Gi-Oh is just has been getting faster and faster and faster. It's not slowing down. So unless the game slows down, time tearing Morganite is gonna be a little bit underused. But that doesn't mean it doesn't have a place, and I think I think we need an we need an inventive way for people to use time tearing Morganite. Outside of that, I stick with the final grade of B. Okay, alrighty, and as you can see in front of you, we have a real evaluation of Amazing Defenders. Um, so far, with the support that it gets, even in this set, Rescue Ace gets some support in this set. There's just one card, I believe, and then in Duelist Nexus, the next set after this one. Rescue Ace gets more support. Um, so the new evaluation is new grade C. It goes from an F, uh, F rank to a C rank. While it's better than it was before, it's not better than this set. Unfortunately, this set, Cyberstorm Axis, is still better than Cyberstorm Axis. So the archetypes that um, I feel that have the best... Um, archetype potential rather like me, uh, you know competitive potential we have purely at 20 percent mikanko at 40 percent and rescue ace at 60 percent first let's go with purely purely is at the lowest 20 percent now you may wonder why is this archetype at a, at a measly 20 percent because you are trash let's talk about it first of all purely is mostly beast while yes, One for One has been reprinted, and it is a good reprint, since it hasn't had a reprint for a long time. And yes, it still leaves um, Amazing Defenders still being the worst set of the year, even with improvements, even with the fact that it has entered um, OCG tournaments, it still doesn't change anything. You are still the worst set of the year, Bar none. You haven't brought anything to the table in TCG. And what we have here is still yet to be proven. Now, some of the reasons why it's done well in OCG is that Branded was hit severely hard several lists before in OCG, before um, Purely and the rest came into... Uh, that's why they did so much damage. Now, when we look at Mikanko, we have a bit of mixed messaging here. While yes, the unconventionalism is great, is could be considered fantastic as we use equip spells and whatever. Um, is there is there a consistent way to be searching these equip spells? No. Typing of Mikanko is all over the place already, being very difficult outside of ritual support 
really can't uh, add any outside consistency boosting. Yeah, sure, we could add reinforcement of the army, obviously, to get us our Mukanko searcher, you know, for searching masters. But here's the thing. Our searcher is only for, what, two things? Do we, are we going to get traps in the future? Possibly. Uh, do we have a, do we have a searcher for traps? Um, you know, we don't know. And here's the thing, there's a lot of question marks with Mekanko. The foundation l doesn't look simple, it doesn't look formulated, it doesn't look like it's that we have something to work with here, and this is indeed a problem. It is okay to be out there, but you need to have a strong foundation to build on here, and we really don't have a strong foundation here. While, and this is why I would put it at 40%. While, yes, we can argue that there is a ritual support uh, that has come over the years that is fantastic, that is great, but Mikanko as a whole, right, is severely lacking here and definitely needs some serious support. While, if it gets a second wave, then we could see it in a future set. We could raise this potential up for, you know, the meta swing to maybe possibly a 50 or we're going to a 60%. So it's looking slightly better. And maybe there are some ways we could increase uh, this percentage to a 40 or 60 percent maybe 80 percent right now but the thing is is that it's unconventional and the found but the problem is it's the foundation that it has at the moment is not solid sometimes you need a solid foundation in order to build something great and here's the thing with mechanical the foundation that it has at the moment is not really solid it's quite flimsy here it's a foundation built on sand and this is a bit of a problem so with all this said, we have the final verdict for Mikanko is 40%. It might do something, it has a chance to do something to enter a competitive scene, maybe a bit of mixtures here, maybe it could um, enter into regionals, maybe it could possibly, would it top? I really don't think so. There's a lot of things going against this archetype, but there's no reason why it can't do something in our competitive scene. Okay, and we have our final, a final archetype, Rescue Ace, at a shocking 60%. The archetype with the most potential to enter our competitive scene and to do some serious damage, I would say, is Rescue Ace. Now, you wonder why. Rescue Ace, yes, it is a bit xenophobic with Fire Hydrant, don't get it twisted. But what does Rescue Ace have going for it? A solid foundation and great direction. And that is what we're looking for to, uh, to that is what we're looking for to enter the competitive scene. We're looking for direction and we're looking for a solid foundation. When we look when I look at Rescue Ace, I see something great here. I see something, a good foundation that we can work with. We have a fantastic we have a fantastic searcher for monster spells or traps. We have ways to set those monster spells and traps in a unique and also fast way. We have our negation as well, which we can use. I'll bite slow, but we will take it. So, our foundation, we have a, we have a good searcher, good uh, negation card, and we have a form of removal. Plus, we have unity in the fact that all of them are machines. This means that we can use Therions, again, or generic machine support, raising that percentage to 60%. And I feel like if Rescue Ace is worked on a bit with a such solid foundation here, you can use Therions. There's loads of things here. There's something special here waiting to be, to be an Earth here. It could possibly, with current support that we have at the moment, it could even go to a shocking 80%. There is something special here and definitely has the highest, and definitely I would say in Amazing Defenders, is a set that is the most likely, it is the archetype most likely to enter the competitive scene. There's a lot going for it. It's got unity in, it's got unity in its, in its typing because everything is the same type. It's got 
Simplicity in the fact that all the effects in the archetype are easy to understand and easy to follow. You know, we like that. We like that a lot. Remember, a simple foundation is good. What matters, in my opinion, in UJ, if you're starting out as a new archetype, it's better to do one job and do it well and work and do something that works then do a million things and not do any of them right. And this is some of the issues that we see with mechanical and purely. Purely at the moment is at 20% simply because there's not enough main deck monsters and we don't have enough level one monsters. And while maybe that's a lie, we do have enough level one monsters, but the problem is what are boards are we ending on with purely? What are we doing here? Our message, our journey, our end board, everything that we're doing is mismanaged. It is careless. It is just thrown out there. We don't know what the hell we're flipping doing here. This is why it also stays at 20%. We look at Mikanko and the direction there is a bit aimless. What the hell are we doing here? We need to have direction here. The direction is completely lost. While yes, they, you can argue, yes, there are ways to do something and generic way to support can get us there, but the direction to get to that end board is a bit confused. We're, we're a bit confused. We, we don't know what we're doing here. What is the ideal end board for Mikanko? You know, pure Mikanko, we don't know. Remember, you need to have a vision of your destination as a new archetype. And if you don't have a vision of your destination, we got problems. We got serious problems here, and that's how I see Mechanical. Well, with Rescue Ace, we have a solid foundation, and we have a solid vision of our end board. We know what we're doing, we know what we want, and we know how to get there. Okay, so maybe how to get there is plagued with a lot of uh, stumbling blocks, but we, we, we dare to dream, and we dare to care. And this is important, is that we dare to care. Having a plan is much better than not having a plan at all. And it's been for that reason, the archetype with the highest potential in Amazing Defenders to enter the competitive scene is Rescue Ace at a whopping 60%. And I approve of this. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My faith, right, is in your hands.